hey there. Today's video is going to be about the different COVID vaccines and my experience getting the Pfizer vaccine about three months ago. So I'm going to go and watch my experience getting the first dose and the second dose and then I will see y'all after that. And I just got the first shot of the COVID-19 vaccine because the owners front one posted hospital was offering the vaccine. Not mandatory yet, but they were offering it. So I went ahead and got my first uh, two shot series with the Pfizer and the Moderna, but I was just offering the Pfizer one. But it's still a two shot series. So I just got my first shot. I get my second shot in 21 days. And basically, this is going to be my COVID vaccine journey video to explain to people from a medical professional herself the impacts of the vaccine. Today, I was going to talk about the importance of why I got the vaccine. And for me, it was, I've seen this since before the pandemic got really bad. Like we had our first COVID patient in the ER. That was my patient. Thanks to a certain charge here. So, literally the entire year, I've been dealing with this. And taking care of patients and seeing how good they can do, how bad they do. A lot of times, typically how bad they do. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it. And so, if this is one more thing that's going to keep people from dying, I'm all for it. Because I have watched too many people die from this to not care or think it's not important. So, this is just, as a healthcare provider, it's just important to care about the health of everybody not just who you feel needs it. I left my up on that. But other than that, the process to get the vaccine at my hospital was you had to fill out a survey saying you weren't pregnant, you never had a religious reaction to a vaccine before, which is the same with all vaccines. Um, so then they called me to set up an appointment time. Went to go my social appointment time. So a whole paper of stuff that you would normally do before you got any vaccine. Um, and then it was just shot in the arm, and that was it. I typically after the flu shot, my arm is sore. Mom just chilling right now. So that's another funny story about who administered my COVID vaccine. But that will be saved for a later video because it goes into detail about something else. But, anyways, I was just glad that, like, because they tell you to go wait in a, like, a room and everyone's like six good parts to do your 15 minute wait time. Make sure you don't have a reaction like you do with every IM shot. Um, and, like, everyone in there was just talking about the, like podcasts and like, how they're just tired of people not taking this seriously. And I'm just like, can we just have this mentality for everybody, please? Thank you very much. So, yeah, this was shot one of my COVID vaccine. I will update y'all throughout the course of my 21 days. If something happens, probably not. And then I will update again when I get my second shot of my COVID vaccine. Sometimes Wednesday we have ICU holes in the ER, so probably not 
Oh, we're going to make one again. Right? So, for a second shot. Feels good so far. Let's get it. Shot time's up. 15 minutes is over. Feel good. Feel great. On to take care of my IC patients in the ER because we have no IC beds. So, go ahead and take care of my IC patients. And welcome back. As you just saw, I got the second dose of my Pfizer vaccine. And you saw my reactions and everything to it, or my lack thereof reactions, because the only thing was after the second dose, I felt tired, but I don't know if that was because I worked three days in a row in the ER, or the vaccine itself. But other than that, it was all good. And as of now, March 14th, over a million doses of the coronavirus vaccine have been administered between the Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. The most common ones are the Pfizer and the Moderna. And there isn't really a whole lot of difference in all of them. The biggest thing is you get the first dose and then 14 days later you get the Pfizer, 21 days later you get the Moderna. For some reason, if you work in the military system or the government, they're given the Moderna one. And the hospital I got mine from was given the Pfizer. But each individual business, is, well, healthcare entity is giving out whichever one, I guess, is cheaper for them. I don't really know how they go about the sign. Oh, I got the Pfizer. Oh, I got the Moderna. But it's depending on that healthcare agency. Most of the drug stores like CVS and Walgreens are doing the Pfizer and the Moderna one. And is the vaccine right for you? The biggest contraindication to all these vaccines per the CDC guidelines is if you have an allergy to eggs or latex, if you have any other antibiotic reactions or shot reactions and that's about it. The, what, there's two big issues I've seen across the board with people having with the vaccines and one of them being if I'm pregnant or wanting to be pregnant can I still get the vaccine and at least studies from the CDC and OBGYNs have said the risk of getting COVID outweigh the risk of the vaccine for pregnant women. So basically what that means is if a pregnant woman were to get COVID, they would be a whole lot worse off than if they got the vaccine. And pretty much half the people I work with are pregnant. They got the vaccine. They're fine. So. That's the biggest thing I've heard. Once again, I'm going to drop some links in the description so you can read for yourself because I believe in making informed decisions. But based on everything I've read, based on all the healthcare providers I've worked with, based on all the infections of these doctors, the benefits outweigh the risk for getting the COVID vaccine in pregnant women. The second thing is a little bit more in detail. I've seen lots of black and African American people say they don't want to get the vaccine, which their issue with is more not trusting the government to give them injections, which is completely understandable based on history with giving African American people shots. If you would like an example of that, just see the Tuskegee Airmen and the syphilis experiment. That pretty much kind of sums up a good chunk of why they're hesitant. But once again, benefits of getting the vaccine in black Americans outweigh the risk of getting COVID in black Americans. So. Once again, I'm going to drop a whole bunch of links in the description that are evidence-based practice so you can make informed decisions for yourself because, once again, 
making an informed decision is very, very important. The biggest thing after that is how do I get a COVID vaccine? Because being in the ER and now I see you, I have lots of patients coincidentally ask me, how do I get the COVID vaccine? It depends on the hospital you work at. Some of them will give the patients the COVID vaccine. Some of them, they still have to make appointments after the hospital stay in order to get the vaccine. For everyone else, it's depending on what state you live in. Because right now, Alabama has opened it up to basically in like the third tier of people getting the vaccine. And so is Tennessee. Georgia's apparently behind on it. I only know this because I have friends who live in Georgia who are having to come to Alabama to get the COVID vaccine. But pretty much now, in states that it's opened up at, which I'll also drop links below for which states it's available in, or at least open to a larger majority of people. In, the, in those states, you can pretty much get it at CVS, Walmart, Walgreens, Publix. Most every hospital is offering it to the public. You just have to call that hospital to make an appointment, which I will drop links below how to do that in Alabama. And that's it. You make the appointment. At least in Alabama, I would recommend for the general public showing up at least three hours before your appointment time because in Alabama we had a drive up clinic of doing vaccines that the drive up line wrapped around four blocks five times and that was at seven o'clock in the morning so maybe other states are different but at least here it's, it's been taking people at least four hours to wait in line to get the vaccine so get there early make sure you wear a mask when you go get the vaccine especially if you're getting the first one and make sure you social distance make sure you come in with your id or some form of identification if you have a extensive list of medical issues, I would just bring a list of it just to, you can present to whoever's administering the vaccine about, like, hey, this is what my background is, and they can tell you if you can start to get the vaccine or not. And that's about it. Typically, right after you get the shot, you should be fine. They make you wait 15 minutes just to make sure you don't have a reaction from the shot, which if you're in the medical profession, it's normal after you get an IM shot to make small wait 15 minutes to make sure they don't have a reaction. In the ER, after they get a Rocephin shot, we have to watch them for 15 minutes to make sure they don't have a shot reaction to it. And this has been going on long before COVID, so any type of IM injection, it's kind of standard to wait 15 minutes. It's not just with COVID. People think, oh, why are you waiting 15 minutes? That's standard. It's flu shot, Rocephin shot, any type of IM injection, intramuscular injection, it's standard to wait 15 minutes. Typically after the first one, everyone's symptoms have been varying, but the most common thing is a sore arm because a needle was jammed into your arm. A foreign object was jammed into your arm that's not supposed to be there. So you're going to have some inflammation and some soreness from that needle being in your arm. And typically that goes right around day three. You may have some COVID symptoms of like the body aches, fatigues, a little bit of an elevated temperature, chills for about 24, 48 hours after. That usually comes after the second shot, not the first one. And that is fine. As long as it goes away, as long as it goes away, you're good. If it doesn't go away, I would seek further medical attention. But that just means your immune response is working, developing immunity to the coronavirus. So that is good. So, 
and typically the second shot symptoms a little bit more elevated. I personally didn't have any symptoms for either shot. I know people who didn't have symptoms for either. I know people who've had body aches and fatigue after the second dose. So it's pretty much dependent on the person. But the biggest thing is just making sure you get both doses because after the first shot you are 45% protected. After the second shot you are 95, 94 to 96% effective protected from coronavirus. Pfizer, you're 96. Moderna, you're 94. I believe Johnson & Johnson, you're 92 or 93. So that's really the most important thing is making sure you get both doses, not just one. And that wraps up this video about the coronavirus vaccines. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Just drop them down below. I will also leave links to everything that's evidence-based down below so you can make an informed decision for yourself. And I will talk to y'all in another video. Y'all have a good one. Bye.